Okay, welcome to your ionic compounds homework. Uh, the, the main thing to keep in mind when you're doing this homework is the following things. First of all, the periodic table has this uh, boundary here that separates the metals, which are all the elements over here, from the nonmetals, which are these ones over here. And that metals will combine with nonmetals to form ionic compounds and that the noble gases uh, won't participate in this because they don't need to gain or lose electrons. In other words, noble gases don't form ions or ionic compounds. Now, let's just take a look at the first few examples and see that this will help us do this. So I'm going to move this up a little bit here. All right, so in our first example, uh, we were given the following elements. We are given chlorine, so we find it, it's over here. And if we look, it's got a negative one charge. And we find we have calcium, which is over here. And if we look right here, we see it has a plus two charge. So yes, a compound can form because I have a metal and I have a nonmetal. Uh, now I want to write down the compound formula. So to do that, what I do is I take the metal and I write it first, because remember, boys lead. So I'll write C, A. And I have to keep in mind that it has a plus two charge. And then I'm going to write down the nonmetal, which is chlorine. I'll write it second. And it has a negative one charge. And if you forget, I know this is a plus two because I look here. And I know this is a minus one because I look here. Now when they're dancing together, they swap numbers. So that means what I'll need to have is a ratio of one calcium, which I don't write the number one, to two. In other words, they wrote down each other's number. I put a 1 here and a 2 here. Notice I don't write negative and positive. These are the charges of the ions. This says it's a positive 2 ion and a negative 1 ion. But these numbers down here, these subscripts, these are the ratio. What this is saying is I have a 1 to 2 ratio. I can't have a negative 1 to 2 ratio. I can't have a negative amount of, of calcium. So I have a 1 to 2 ratio, which you see written right here. Now to write its name, I say the name of this sign, which is calcium. I do not need Roman numerals because if I look at calcium, it always forms a plus two and it does not form anything else. So I don't have to clarify with a Roman numeral. And then chlorine changes its name to chloride. Let's try the next one. All right, to do our next one then, uh, we have uh, a combination of sodium, which is here, which is a plus one. And we have helium, which is over here, which is a noble gas. And since this is a noble gas, notice I don't see an ionic charge here because noble gases don't form ions, so no. I cannot form a compound, therefore I cannot write a formula and I cannot give it a name. Let's try our third example and then we'll do our homework. So here we have nickel. Now nickel, in case you don't know, is element 28 over here. I'm going to blow this up a little bit and show you something here. Uh, let me try to make this a little bit bigger. So when I look at nickel here, Notice that nickel uh, is usually a plus 2, but it can also be a 3. So it makes 3 and 2, and it's usually a plus 2. So I'm going to choose for this particular exercise to assume that it's a plus 2, unless I've been told otherwise. So let's make this smaller. Okay, how's that? All right. So I put a, in that case, I put a plus 2 up here. And I find sulfur, which is element 16, which is over here. And if I look, it's a minus 2. So again, I put the, uh, the boy leads. The metal goes first. So I'm going to say Ni, which has a plus 2 charge. That's a 2, by the way. And I put sulfur second. The girl follows, and she's got a negative 2. So what that gives me is a 2 to 2 ratio. So this trick of swapping numbers works, but you've got to be careful because a 2 to 2 ratio can be reduced. And if, if it's possible to reduce it, you must reduce it. So a 2 to 2 ratio reduces to a 1 to 1 ratio that we see here. Uh, and then what I have to do is I write his name. Well, I can't just say nickel sulfide because what kind of nickel are you talking about? Are you talking about the plus 2 version of nickel or the plus 3 version of nickel? Since there's two different types of nickels that form, I have to stipulate by saying nickel Roman numeral 2. And that Roman numeral 2 is telling me it's a plus 2 ion. 
It's not telling me how many of these I have. It's telling me what the charge is. It's a plus two nickel as opposed to a plus three nickel, which would have a different ratio. All right, with that in mind, let's go ahead and do our homework. Okay, let's get on it. Here we have magnesium and lithium. If I notice, they are both metals. So the answer is no, you cannot form a compound. Let's try the next one. Uh, for the next one, I have fluorine, which is here, and RH, which I believe is rhodium, which is here. Now, if I look, so yes, a compound can most definitely form. Now, the next thing is I need to write down the ionic charges. So let me make this a little bit bigger. So rhodium is a plus three, it looks like, a uh, plus three. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, great, the positive one goes first. So I'm going to say I have RH, and that's a plus three. And then F comes afterwards, and F is a minus one. I'm going to swap numbers, so it's going to be a one to three ratio. And when I go to name it, because rhodium can form more than one ion, I'm going to call this rhodium 3 fluoride. Let's try the next one. Uh, the next one here I have uh, nickel, no I'm sorry, nitrogen and cesium. Uh, nitrogen is a non-metal, cesium is over on this side down here is a metal, so the answer is yes, I can form it. And you know what, I'm pretty sure cesium is a plus two, but let me just look. Uh, no, cesium is a plus one. Ooh. Okay, so nickel is, uh, nickel, nitrogen is minus three, and cesium is plus one. So I'm going to put the cesium first, and I'm going to put the uh, nitrogen second, and now we're going to swap numbers. Nitrogen is a negative three, so I'll put a three here. Cesium is a plus one, so it's a one, which I'm not going to write over here. Uh, so it's a three to one ratio. And since cesium only forms one possible ion, I can just write cesium nitride. And the next one I have is uh, barium, which is a metal, and aluminum, which is a metal. Two metals? No way. No compound. Next one's easy because look what I got. I got neon. Neon's a noble gas. Noble gases don't form compounds. Boom. Let's keep going here. I'm going to scroll this up a little bit. All right. Now we have uh, tantalum and oxygen. Well, let's see. Let me bring this up a little bit. Tantalum. Wherefore art thou? Here's tantalum. It looks to me like tantalum is a plus five. Uh, so I'm going to write a plus five here. Oxygen is a minus two, a non-metal. Since I have a metal and a non-metal, yes, it can form. I'm going to put Ta first, which is a plus five. I'm going to put the oxygen second, which is a minus two. We're going to swap numbers, so I'm going to get a two to five ratio. All you do is you swap numbers, and don't make this one negative, because you can't have a negative amount of tantalum. Now, if I look down here, tantalum only forms plus five, so I do not need Roman numerals. I'll just say tantalum oxide. Next one, I have uh, aluminum, a metal, iodine, a non-metal. Uh, so, yes, I can form a compound. Aluminum, if I look, I'll see it's plus three. Better move this out of my way. And iodine... Whoops, wrong thing. <laughs> and then I have iodine. Oh, darn it. <laughs> and I have iodine, which is a minus one. So it's going to be a one to three ratio. And that's since aluminum only forms one type of ion, it's going to be aluminum iodide. Next, I have lead and fluorine. Now, you know what? Lead's either plus two or plus four. Let me see which is more likely. It looks to me like it's uh, plus two, but it could be a plus four. But in this case, it's, it's a plus two is what I'm going to go with. So, for lead, you know what? I'm probably going to make this a little bit bigger here. Okay. Give myself room to work. Okay. So, lead is a plus two. Fluorine is a minus one. Uh, so yes, I can form a compound. I'm going to put the lead first, 
And since I have one of these, I need one of them here. I'm not going to write a 1. And now I'm going to write fluoride. And since lead is a 2, I'm going to write a 2 down here. PBF2. And since lead can form more than one ion, I have to use Roman numerals. So I'm going to say lead, Roman numeral 2, fluoride. Uh, next we have uh, sulfur, which is minus 2, potassium, which is plus 1. So yes, boys and girls can dance. Uh, sulfur is minus 2, potassium is plus 1. I put the positive one first. And I'm going to give it sulfur's number, which is 2. I'm going to put the sulfur second and give it potassium's number, which is 1. And it's a 2 to 1 ratio. And since potassium only forms one ion, I'll just say potassium, no Roman numeral, sulfide. And guys, I'm really sorry about how horrible I write with a stylus, but you know what? I'm trying. All right. Now we got bromine and tungsten. You know what? I don't remember. I'm pretty sure tungsten's a six, but let's just take a look at it. Tungsten. Yeah, tungsten's a six. There it is right there. And notice it makes a whole bunch of other ones. So I am going to have to use Roman numerals, it looks like. So here you go. Bromine. I know bromine is a minus one ion. Tungsten is a plus six. So yes, positives and negatives, they combine. I put the positive one first. I give it bromine's number. Bromine is a 1, so I don't have to put a 1 here. It's understood. Uh, and then I'm going to put the uh, bromine next. Bromine. I'm going to give it tungsten's number, which is 6. So WBR6. Since tungsten can form multiple ions, I'll have to say which one it is. Tungsten. Roman numeral. 6 bromide. Notice all these ide, 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 ides. Next one, we've got, uh, uh, we have aluminum and argon. Argon's a noble gas, so the answer is a big no. Let's keep going here. Now we've got uh, radium and chlorine. Well, it turns out that radium, I believe, is a plus two. Let's take a quick look. Yep, it's a plus two. It's a metal. Chlorine, I know, is a minus one, so yes, they can form a compound. I put the positive one first, Ra. I'm going to give it chlorine's number. Chlorine is one, so I don't have to write anything down. It's understood to be one. And now I'm going to go ahead and write chlorine and give it radium's number, which is two. And what I have here is radium. And I don't have to say Roman numeral two because it's always a two. And then I'll say chloride. And it's worth knowing the reason this works is because if I have two negative ones, that's negative two, and one positive is positive, positive two and negative two cancel each other out. Let's keep going. Now I've got nickel and lithium. Whoops, I've got I got nickel, lithium. Hey, those are both metals. So the answer is nope, you can't do it. And then here I have zirconium and iodine. Uh, well, zirconium is always a plus 4. Iodine is always a minus 1. So yes, I have positive, I have negative, I have metal, I have non-metal, I have boy, I have girl. I put the boy, the metal first, zirconium. He's going to write down iodine's number, which is 1. So I, I have an understood 1 here. I don't have to write it down. And then I'm going to write down iodine. And I'm going to give iodine zirconium's number, which is 4. Uh, so I put a 4 here because four negative ones cancels out one positive four. And the name of this is just going to be zirconium. It only makes one ion, so I don't use a Roman numeral. And then I say iodide. Well, let's have more fun on the back. The fun never stops. So what you have to do now is something different. Now you've got to take the name of the compound and turn it into a chemical formula. So the trick here is to, uh, to use what you know about their ionic charges uh, to, to figure out the ratios. So I see I have osmium, and I've been told it's a, a 4, so I don't even have to look it up. That's OS, and that's a plus 4. 
and I have chloride, and if I look up chlorine, I'll see chlorine is a minus 1. So that's minus 1. And they just write down each other's number. It's going to be a, a 1, which is understood, to 4 ratio. So I put a 4 over here. And that's a chemical formula for osmium chloride. That's how we do it. Let's keep going. All right, I have iron 3 sulfide. So you know what I'm going to write? I'm going to say, I'm going to do it over here. This is plus 3. If I look up sulfur, that's minus 2. Uh, so I'm going to put Fe, and I'm going to give it sulfur's number. They're going to write down each other's number. So sulfur is 2. And then I'm going to write down sulfur, and I'm going to give sulfur iron's number. So it's Fe2S3. Here's why this works. 2 positive 3s is positive 6. 3 negative 2s is negative 6. And when you combine positive 6 and negative 6, you get 0, which is neutral, which is what all matter is. Let's keep going here then. All right, barium nitride. I'll look up barium. Barium is negative 2. Nitrogen is, my, I'm sorry, it's positive 2. Nitrogen is minus 3. So I'll say BA, and I'll write down nitrogen's number, and I'll put nitrogen, and I'll write down barium's number. Now notice, in this, not, nothing yet has reduced, so so far it's pretty straightforward, no problems, let's keep going here. Uh, now we've got sodium oxide. Sodium is plus 1, oxygen is minus 2, so I'll put in A, and I'll give it oxygen's number, 2, and then I'll put oxygen, and I'll give it sodium's number, which is 1. Man, look at this, this is not hard at all, what are you guys talking about? All right, now I got mag manganese 6. So right there it tells me. Right there it says, look, it's a plus 6. All right, and oxygen is a minus 2. Now this one's going to be a little bit tricky. Watch this. So what I do is I say, well, manganese is MN, and I'm going to give it oxygen's number, which is 2. And then I'm going to put oxygen, and I'm going to give it manganese's number, which is 6. And now look what happens. I have a 2 to 6 ratio. A 2 to 6 ratio can be reduced. So what this reduces to, let me see, you know, I don't even know. I'm going to try something here. Let's see if my eraser works. It doesn't, darn it. <laughs> okay, so what I have to do then instead is I'm going to reduce this. So uh, this reduces to 1 and this reduces to 3. So really it's MN1O3. And the reason this works is because three negative two ions, that's negative six, that counteracts one positive six ion. All right, now we've got calcium carbide. Calcium plus two carbide minus four. So CA is going to write down carbon's number four, and C is going to write down calcium's, which is two. You know what? That also reduces. So that reduces to a two to one ratio. Let's keep going. Sodium fluoride. Sodium is plus one. Fluorine is minus one. Well, it can't get easier than this. I guess it's just NaF. All right, let's keep going here. Now I got niobium five. Hey, I know from this right here that what I've got is a plus five. Oxygen is a minus two. By now you're probably starting to know that. Niobium is uh, was an NB. NB, and I have two of them because I write down oxygen's number. They really trade numbers. And then oxygen is going to write down niobium's. And the reason this works is because 5, negative 2's is negative 10, and 2, positive 5's is positive 10. All right, rubidium. Oh, gosh, what's rubidium anyway? Rubidium's a plus 1. Okay, so I have plus 1. Chloride is minus one. Oh, these are great. I love these. RBCL. Can't get easier than that. Now I got copper one, so I know it is a plus one. Sulfur is a minus two. CU, write down sulfur's number. And then sulfur is going to write down copper's number. And you don't, even though it's a one, I don't write it down. It's understood to be one. And then finally, one last one. We'll be done with our homework. Look at this. 10, 4, so I know, <laughs> good buddy, so I know this is a plus 4, I know that because it's telling me right here, and then fluoride is always minus 1, notice we always know the nonmetals, 
So I'm going to say SN, unfortunately that is the chemical symbol for uh, tin. Uh, and now I'm going to write down fluoride's number, which is a 1. I'm not going to write it down. And then I write down F. And I'm going to write down uh, tin's number, which is 4. People, we are done with our homework. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.